Oh, yeah, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I love it. Let's get the lights on here. I'm just gonna soak in the moment, the time here. Just, just enjoy myself for a few moments. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Jobu. And as always, I wanna say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Jobu Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope you guys are taking a good look because things are changing here at the Joe Boo Sports Report, at least at the Red Brick House. We started the process of getting this floors redone, and once it's redone oh, and varnished and things, we're going to have a different look here. So pardon our dust. <laughs> You've been pardoning our dust for quite a while since the end of last football season when we really started getting down and dirty here with the Red Brick House. And I appreciate you guys following along here as well as my other channel, Joe Boo's Day Job. So today is one of those opportunities. I always say that each week in the NFL season, there's 18 weeks, one week, which is a bye week, which you don't lose in the bye week. You don't lose in the bye week is an opportunity for your team to make a statement that they belong as one of those 14 teams that are vying for that Super Bowl. And this week is no different. But there's other things that are on the line here um, besides the playoffs here. It's actually, for the Cowboys, it's a little bit of recognition. And I will say, you know, forgive me, when I, this is going to sound arrogant, and I don't mount, mean to sound arrogant at all, but today... ESPN finally started actually saying something I've been saying for quite a bit. And we'll get to that in a bit here, too. But I want to deal with, I talked about it a little bit last night, um, some of the stuff that is going on with, I'll come back to this. This is an opportunity for the Dallas Cowboys to hopefully change the narrative a bit. We keep hearing Whenever the Cowboys do something, it's always minimized that it doesn't mean anything or there's extenuating circumstances why it's happening as opposed to them just playing well. You can't go through and say, the Cowboys, man, they are playing great football right now. No, it's always, well, they're paying shit teams. Dak Prescott before, when he used to have games where he's throwing, you know, 40 burgers. Yeah, well, you know, his statistics, they're garbage time. Like there's nobody else in the history of football that has had a game that's a blowout that they're getting statistics. So the Cowboys this year, you can actually look and say, my quarterback isn't even playing in the fourth quarter. My quarterback is eating turkey drum drumsticks in the fourth quarter, chilling on the sideline. So you can't say he's padding the stats. And when you look at what they've been doing, it, it's not like there's – not good teams playing bad teams besides the Cowboys. But, of course, it's always different. Because I can point to you and tell you, the Cowboys and Eagles played, both played New England, they both played the Commanders, and they both played the Jets. The Cowboys scored 113 points in those games. The Eagles scored 83. The Dallas defense gave up 23 points in all three of those games. The Eagles gave up 65. How badly is the number skewed? You could take the Commanders game where the Commanders scored 31, not once but twice. And Dak, uh, excuse me, the Dallas Cowboys defense didn't give up 31 points in three different teams, okay? But here's the thing. This is a no-win situation for the Cowboys tonight because if they beat the Seattle Seahawks, it's going to be, well, Seahawks, they're not a winning team because they'll be 6-6. Six and six. They're not a winning team. They're garbage. You know, they still haven't proven anything. You know that's coming, and that's fine. I just hope that my Cowboys continue to do this. Win, get out healthy, 
and learn to get ready for the rest of the season. That they continue to get better and continue to keep on rolling. Unbelievably, everybody practiced yesterday. Everybody. The Cowboys are healthy. The Cowboys seeming to have found their footing, seeming to find multitudes of weapons, seeming to have found, you know, rotation of guys to rush the passer. You know, are, are, do we have places where we're worried? Yes, of course we do. But right now, the Cowboys, when you look at some of the other teams that they're chasing and trying to do things against, the Cowboys are healthier. The Cowboys seem to have had, since the San Francisco game, a trajectory that has been going uphill. Now, I want to deal with, of course, some more of the hate. There is, I, I don't, there's some things that should be across, you know, that, that people cross the line with. There are some people that are just hateful and they don't care who they step on to try and get their five minutes of fame. And some of this stuff is kind of crazy because, you know, I get it. You know, you're, 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 it doesn't matter what I say or anybody says. If you don't like Dak, he can end up winning MVP and be Super Bowl champion, and you'll still say, Dak sucks, get rid of him. Uh, it's just the way it is. And you can't, it's literally like me talking to this brick wall with some of you, and I get that. But sometimes you can kind of go over the line. The thing I love about the Pac McAfee show is they're not that, not like some of these shows are. Last night, I, I, let me play this again because I, I want to contradict exactly what she says. Because this is kind of like cray cray. I think he should be in the conversation. But if we're talking about right now, the season ends, there are a lot of people who think Dak Prescott should be the MVP, which to me is crazy. To be in the conversation is not crazy, but to win the MVP, you have to hit some sort of criteria. So. Do they have the best record in the conference or the best record in the league? I think not. They don't. Are they leading their division? No. 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 Is he specifically checking off any statistical phenomenon? Mm -mm. No. He's second in passing touchdowns. Not one. Second. Two. That's not the winner. That's second. Passing touchdowns. Second in completion percentage. And second. Mind you, the person that's ahead of him, Josh Allen, has an extra game. He's ahead of him by one. And so he had 12 games. If you take 12 games and 24 touchdown passes, that's two a game. So if you take that game away, then he actually has 22. But be go on. And in passer rating. He's not hitting any statistical phenomenon, nor is he leading in any of those categories. Are they beating good teams? Mm. No. Mm. Has he had a moment this season where we have come up here and said, Dak Prescott is unequivocally the best player in the league right now today. We watch football all weekend. Okay, so when we say we, we, when we say we, are you talking about that show where you have Shady McCoy who literally said he's ass ass, Mr. Homer himself? Sam Acho, who literally says that Cooper Rush would have won as many games as Dak Prescott. So when you say we, okay, you are in a bubble where you're all doing a circle jerk together of Dak Prescott shade. Uh, so that's not exactly everybody else. And it came in like, damn, Dak Prescott. Did you see that? Dak, did you see that? James, I know we all watch football, but did you see Dak Prescott this weekend? <clears throat> Not once has that happened. Because he didn't what play this weekend. Have? Well, you saw the little little note at the end. They have a, a, a big, loud fan base, so that helps. He's got a star in the helmet. Honestly, factually, checklist, checklistically, <laughs> what is he doing that qualifies him to be leading the MVP conversation right now? All right. Um, we'll, we'll go through and we'll challenge a little bit of this. Shout out to former NFL quarterback Chase Daniels. Chase Daniels, um, I'll take his word over Joy Taylor. Okay, but, but let's, let's listen to what he had to say. All right, Dak Prescott. Oh, excuse me. 20. Chase Daniel here. This is the Chase Daniel Show. Today, we are going to dig into Dak Prescott. 
in my opinion, Dak Prescott right now is playing like a top three quarterback and quite honestly should be in the MVP conversation. I don't care who they played. I don't care where they played. I don't care about the records. The dude is absolutely balling right now. And if you don't think so, you need to watch this because I'm going to show you their Thanksgiving game and we're going to break it all down right here, right now on the Chase Daniels show. All right, so I'm going to go with Chase Daniels right there. And I'll also go with Aaron frickin' Rodgers, who praised Dak Prescott. So I will take Chase Daniels, and I will take Aaron Rodgers over what you got to say, Joy. But beyond that, I want to actually, this morning, as we get ready, because I'm going to, I got to sand the floors, because we're going to try and get this place really looking good. Um, I want to hear about uh, what GetUp has to say um, about Dak versus Jalen Hurts. And three, Dallas Cowboys hosting Seattle to begin a very tough stretch of their schedule. After tonight, Dallas's next four games are going to be against the Eagles, the Bills, the Dolphins, and the Lions. So this stretch That's will have tough. a lot to say about how Dallas sets itself up for a potential playoff run. The Seahawks, meanwhile, have lost three of their last four games, and their road doesn't get any easier. After tonight, they got the 49ers and the Eagles coming up next. And if they lose tonight, they drop the 6-6, six and six, just a half game from falling out of the playoffs. All eyes, of course, will be on Dak Prescott, who since week eight has led the NFL in total QBR and touchdown passes. His play over the past month has led some of our own folks to rethink their perceptions about Dak. Listen to RG3. Oh, I thought we were going to talk about RG3. <laughs> I promise you we'll hear from RG3 on Dak in a little bit. Uh, but For anyway. me, it's Mike McCarthy saying to everyone that called his offense archaic and said that the game had passed him by and said that he was a terrible coach, he came back and he made the changes wow. that he needed to make to yeah. get his guy rolling. And Dak Prescott is playing at it, not just at an MVP level. In, in my opinion, he's above Jalen Hurts right now mm. because of the way that he's played. Hmm. So I don't know what's going to happen. So, Joy, is that somebody saying, did you see Dak? Did you see, did you see Dak? Okay. I'm, I'm just asking for a friend. But go on. Next. But I would like to know what you think of what RG3. Robert said. <laughs> <laughs> but, all right. So, Dak Prescott is playing awesome football. It's the best football we've seen him play in years. If he plays the next month like he has the previous month, he's going to win MVP in the NFL. Yeah. He's not there yet, though. He, he's not above Jalen Hurts. And he's, in, in, in the NFC, he's not above Brock Purdy. This game tonight is massive. This, th this is the first team that they're playing this year that's good, that they have a realistic chance to finally beat. They know this. We're, it's not like we're the only people in the media that know that Dallas and this team has not beaten anybody. You know the last time, then on, you know the last time this Cowboys team beat somebody with a winning record? Week one. Like, over I'm a sorry, year week ago. two. Week two. Over a year ago. Because their playoff wow. win was against uh, the Bucks, who had a losing, losing record. record. And yeah, Gardner yeah. Minshew last yep. year when they beat Philadelphia was playing. So the last time Dallas beat somebody with a winning record and their starting quarterback was playing was over a year ago. So for Dak Prescott, like, we, we, the context of the conversation has to, to matter. He's playing awesome. Mm -hmm. Two of the last three opponents they've played against, their head coach got fired, their defense coordinator got fired. Okay? So they're playing dumpster fires. Playing real awesome. He's they're, getting dudes fired. Yeah, he's getting, he's, he's, still well, he's getting dudes fired. He's playing awesome football. If he plays the next month like he has the last month, he will win MVP of the NFL. No, I will say this. From a statistical standpoint, I think he's better than Jalen Hurst, especially the last six weeks. Um, when you look mm. at this a guy season. like Jay This season. Okay. I'm when, asking. I'm asking. This season? What do you mean this season? Statistically, you're saying the numbers prove that Dak is better than Jalen. Statistically, he's, yeah, the stats season. would say he's better. But, but here's the catcher, though. When it comes to when it matters the most at that's, that position, the, the especially versus quality opponents, Jalen Hurts has been phenomenal, in my opinion. You look at four of their last five wins, Dolphins, Cowboys, Chiefs, Bills. Sure. Those are opponents that we hold that's in high regard. That's a real argument. Granted, the Bills have – you know, a six and six record. Right. But it's the fact that Jalen Hurts, when they're down with a minute and something left, and they need a field goal to go sit in an overtime, he's able to make those plays. The only thing, though, Harry, Dak hasn't been given that opportunity outside of one moment this year, right? Maybe two, right? The, the San Francisco and the Philly games. Yeah. Right. We can't necessarily. I know people the day after crushed Dak 
for how that game ended. And obviously there were some plays that you sit there and go, can't take that sack, all that stuff. You're talking about the Philly game. Right, the right, end of the right. Philly game. But he hasn't had as many opportunities as Jalen Hurts this year mm -hmm. in his defense. You know what I'm saying? I got you. So to answer this question, who are you taking head to head? If you have to pick one quarterback Jaylen to win Hurts. a game, that's it. That's, that's the answer. All right, but that's the answer to the question. Right, but that well, is, we'll that is a next, next week question, right? Because they play each other next week, and it's potentially a January question if they meet well, again. Well, the question of is Dak playing better than right. Jalen, so I what, think it answers that question. What can tonight tell you? Like, how important is tonight for Dak huge. and the Cowboys in, in advance of next week's game against the Eagles? Huge. Huge. It is huge. <laughs> yeah. No, it's huge because when we talk about who are the Cowboys, they have a tremendous roster. They finally look like the team that we were expecting to see early on in the season. C.D. Lamb is involved, Brandon Cooks is involved, the defense is phenomenal, and Dak looks comfortable. Dak is playing like the playmaker that we've known him to be. But again, this next month will let us know exactly mm -hmm. who the Cowboys are and where they stand compared to the Eagles and the 49ers. Okay. Yeah, listen, I mean, everyone's making, bringing up great points. And I, listen, we're gonna, tonight they're going to be against a desperate Seattle Seahawks team. They know like their playoff, everybody's playoffs are starting now. Like That's especially right. if you're on the exactly. on the back if you're on the back on the back end like the Seattle Seahawks are, mm -hmm. you know, you're trying to you're trying to keep keep pacing this whole thing. But you know, people when people talk about Dak, they want to qualify by, well, look who he's played. And yeah. I've always said like control the things that you can control, right? Like yep. the Dallas Dak and Dallas they can't control who's on their schedule. Right. You just got to go out there and play there and you play go. your brand of football. It has but hold on, but there wait a minute, hold on. Let me let me let me finish. Let him cook. Because uh -oh. He, oh, I'm gonna cook. Believe that. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like on Thanksgiving, I'm gonna cook. Because what would the narrative be if, if 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 Dak Prescott didn't play well against some of these bad teams? We would be on this show cooking that cooking the hell out of Dak Prescott. So you listen. Right. I'm going to give Dak Prescott all the credit in the world mm -hmm. and Mike McCarthy for the way they've changed. Yeah. They, they've changed the all, you know, way they've kind totally. of called call mm -hmm. plays and the way they've structured things offensively for the way Dak Prescott has targeted C.D. Lamb. That was a point that you brought up, sure. you know, some weeks ago that they don't target their number one, number one wide receiver. How Dak Prescott is using his legs more. Mm -hmm. That's something that I think a mm -hmm. lot of people have been talking about sure. with Dak for quite some time. So now listen, down the stretch, this is what we're talking about. I think this is what everyone's talking about as relates to Dak Prescott. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking about these games. See the Seahawks, Eagles, Bills, Dolphins, Lions. Right. What now you're playing the big boys. And now that, you're playing the big boys. Now we're, we're going we got a lot of questions we're gonna answer. So to the point you made earlier, when they lost to Arizona early in the season, we did we did come down on them, right? Like they weren't doing it right. And then in the San Francisco game, they got blown out. But something changed right around that time, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. this offense was very different. Re reality is this. September, Mike McCarthy knew he was going to get fired. I I if Mike McCarthy kept on the track of that's, what he was in September, he was going to get fired. Mm -hmm. San Francisco happens. I actually had a great exchange on Twitter yesterday with Ed Werder about this because this offense is very different. They've – decided to use personnel differently. We've talked about CeeDee Lamb. We've talked about Brandon Cooks. We've talked about the tight end. They've tied plays together. They're calling plays and saying, okay, defense, how are you reacting to doing offensively? And are there things that we can take advantage of and get to? That's the big difference. Now, you mentioned Dak's legs. I think there's two questions that I would love somebody ask Mike McCarthy, a reporter potentially, okay. to ask Mike McCarthy. Number one, really, how come Dak has started to use his legs differently? Because we, we did not see that over the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. And then how come the downfield passing game has come back? Because that wasn't part last year, and it certainly wasn't part of their offense in September. Um, so I think like have this, we, we have to give Mike McCarthy a lot of credit for the way that he said, if I don't change and change quickly after San Francisco, but can, can I ask you a I'm question? Can I ask you a question, though? Like, Dak Pre it seemed like Dak Prescott even understands, like, as well as he's playing, it did not, none of this even matters. None of it matters. None That's of these even matters. Well, like, even he understands he that. He said that he earlier this week. He said, they I have, haven't done bleep, 100%. basically. They have not beaten a team right. Right. with a winning record right. in 53 weeks. Well, right. technically, the Jets were 1-0. and oh. Thank you. The Jets were 1-0. and oh. That's true. <laughs> but as of present time. <laughs> yeah. no, Thank you. Since they're a different team than... I have been saying that there. You guys know I've been saying that because, you know, oh, they haven't beat a team with the winning. Okay, so now, of course, it's that, that they haven't beat a team that has a winning record right now. Okay, so if the Cowboys end up getting the win tonight, 
they'll continue with that same narrative and they'll say, oh, well, Seattle, they're 6-6. Six and six. They don't have a winning record. We know how it is. We are Dallas Cowboy fans. They are always going to disrespect them. I'm Mark Holmes, and, man, it is game day. And I hope to see you guys real soon. Peace.